Good evening, everyone. How are you guys doing tonight? It's my first time speaking in a few hours, so I feel kind of dry in the throat. I think I think we have uh, some sinuses coming on something. I might be under the weather. I don't know. But if my voice is a little hoarse tonight, I do apologize. It's going to be a pretty light stream with some, uh, it's, it's a light topic. It's just how to keep producing art during difficult times or in hard times. So let's go ahead and welcome the chat. And actually, uh, the length of this stream is probably going to depend on you guys because I, I really just have a few bullet points to, to talk about and until I, you know, maybe go off on a tangent or something. But uh, come, come one, come all with all your questions and we'll get right to it. Of course, of course, how is audio? Please let me know how audio is. I, I think uh, with mic placement being on a panel, I think it, I'm, I'm always quieter uh, compared to Professor Geek. Um, so uh, not not the rewatches. I think I think we're pretty equal in output there. But uh, yeah, just let me know if audio is good. And I'm gonna see if I can turn myself up. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, now I can hear myself. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's go ahead and welcome the chat. Mr. Matchstick says, yo. Wolf 10 Media is planting my flag here to show that I am 12. Very good. And there's me asking you guys if you have any artists, uh, questions, art questions. Uh, questions if you are artists, I meant to say. <laughs> And Big Hal, welcome with a quote by Picasso. Art washes away from the soul the dust of everyday life. And I think this is true. And this might be a little dichotomous with what I have to say, because I am all about producing art, at the very least, practicing your craft every day. So art must be part of your everyday life if you are an artist. Daniel Craig says... Does that mean we engineers have to sit out in, or sit in silence? No, that's, that's not true. In fact, actually what I have to say applies to any discipline, any department. Uh, since this being, you know, an art channel, you know, primarily music, you know, artists I think are my audience, but if you, but I know you listen to music, so I, I feel like you dabble in some kind of art, but engineering uh, is, is uh, totally, any questions on, uh, general practice and discipline is welcome. Aged Boomer, good evening. It's so good to see you. Melissa, I, uh, let's see. I, I really, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything about anything about uh, geek news. I, I get all my geek news from Fan Man. That, that's kind of how it, it, it's working out. Well, I'm not, I'm not that late. I'm, I'm, I'm letting people come in. Thank you, Big Al. Thank you very much. Well, when, when you say, when you hear the word, the phrase hard times, like these are hard times, it's, it's more of a, um, uh, a, a universal idea. You know, obviously this country as well as the world for different things, um, you know, we're, we're going through some, some difficult times and you can be, away from the news all day and still understand we're in some difficult times and we are in difficult times ahead. I don't mean to be a downer, but I want to be also practical. I, I'm pragmatic in that way that um, I, I believe the end of 2020 into 2021, into the next year is going to really ask us to practice endurance. And I wanna give you some tips and tricks. Thank you, Mr. Matchstick. Daniel is here. Nice to see you. Professor Geek says, no fair. Us early stream supporters were times out. Yeah, of the stream. Yeah, that's not very fair of YouTube. Um, who was first? Actually, I don't know who was, was first. Was it Paladin Demo? Or I, I, I didn't check. I was too busy watching someone else's live stream. <laughs> Wolf10 Media says, Sound Engraver, I have followed you on Twitter recently. My art is there, but I also have 
I don't know what that is, but you say for me to be where when you visit there, should you decide? I think I've been on your page, Wolten, because I remember trying to find, uh, it was either you or Owen Lister that had uh, like a spider drawing. I think it was Owen Lister. So I, I checked you out. Um, now, it must be the way I, I have filtered Twitter because I, I do see your art blocked out. <laughs> so um, but we'll see, but I'll still uh, keep keep tabs on, on what you're doing over there on Twitter. Everyone else seems to have abandoned Twitter for some Facebook page. Whoa. Hey, Logan. Nice to see you. How are you? I hope you're doing well. I, I don't, I'm bad with these references, but, but I really, really like your icon, your, your, your pick there. I, I approve. I like the, um, I like blue in that it's a, a contrast. Uh, I, I see a very dark blue, almost black in contrast with the yellow and a little bit of that light blue in, in the back. Good stuff. Keep it. I, I approve. Aged Boomer says, did you ever get create uh, bad creative advice? I don't remember because I don't listen to bad advice. <laughs> uh, I would say... I'd have to think about that one, but I actually will, I will give some advice that, that might be synonymous with, 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 with bad advice. Not that my advice is bad, but, um, kind of warnings on what not to do. Oh, good. I'm so excited. Very, very good stuff. Thank you, Melissa. I, I like Scooby-Doo, but I, I, I've not followed Scooby-Doo since, you know, I was probably 14 or 15. And the Scooby-Doo that I watched was Hanna-Barbera. Thank you, Wolfton. Yes, not only hit those likes, but man, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, even though I do experimental music or music from, you know, use Super Collider or Logic Pro, uh, in addition to this commentary, of course, uh, because you know I'm 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 getting up there in in my sub counts, and it would really be nice to reach a thousand. Not that I wouldn't do it if I didn't reach a thousand. I I love doing this kind of stuff. But yeah, please subscribe if you haven't already. I I, I should I should remember to say that. <laughs> I I I think the content that I give you, you're here, so you approve. <laughs> All right, so I think. <laughs> wait wait, where was that? Uh, Dr. Y says, you get your geek news from fan man. You have my condolences. <laughs> yeah, I, I, most, most video, I, I do try to keep up with his, his stuff and, and, and his non-geek stuff too, with, with his second cup cafe. Oh, thanks. Th thanks, Will 10. Yeah, I probably wouldn't expose myself to that, but that's just a preference. I'll, I'll get through a little bit of chat and then label some bullet points. And if you guys have any questions and I, I will definitely try to answer them to the best of my ability as a, you know, as a composer, as a musician, who's been in music for 23 years and also as a teacher who's, who's taught music for about three years too. So uh, I am, I'm, I, I'm playing teacher today. I, I am totally full on teacher mood. Sound engraver, age boomer. This is from Daniel Craig says creative. In what sense I've, had what I would call bad practice advice when it comes to learning Argentine tango. Is it considered creative advice? Well, anything to do with any art form. So um, if you've had bad advice regarding dance and how to learn, and uh, you, you learn techniques that uh, strain your, your body or um, cause you to overexert yourself, well, yes, of course, that's bad advice. Let's, let, let's be creative. Um, I want to be fair. I want to answer every question as best as I can, uh, starting with Asian Boomer. Bad creative advice. Well, this is probably jumping the gun with what I have to say toward the end of my bullet points. But I would say do not wait until you're inspired. Do not work when you're inspired. You have to work to become in inspired. Working will help the inspiration and you will feel inspired in, in a moment that you do work. Maybe you won't feel inspired that day, uh, but don't wait to be inspired. 
Don't, don't wait to be excited to do something in order to do it. And I don't know if that advice was directed to me that, that I should wait uh, upon a moments of inspiration or, um, you know, the, we, we talked about this with the content of, uh, you know, the movie Xanadu on Troy's channel that, that you can't, you can't wait to be kissed by the muse. Um, now this is, this is just my advice, just based on what I practice as, as, as an artist, you can take it or leave it. Uh, but I would say, don't wait to be inspired that the inspiration really, I promise you, if you devote yourself daily to your art, the inspiration will actually come not only naturally, but automatically. Speaking from experience. <clears throat> Let's see, Mr. Matchstick says, I know you watch some Cowboy Bebop to test it out and animes are not your thing. I get that, but what's your thoughts on music that was up there? I shall stop with the anime questions. Uh, I do appreciate that because I, I know very little about uh, um, the, 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 the actual genre, the art form. Um, I would have to double check, but it, it's, it's got the, uh, a very upbeat kind of saloon style. From, from what I had heard, I'd have to hear it again though, because I, I just listen to music all the time. So I'd have to refer back. I think it was a couple of weeks ago when I was reviewing those scenes. Um, so very, uh, I, I thought it was phenomenal as far as composition from what I had heard. Uh, now, as far as analysis, I would that that would be going through a fine tooth comb because that, that's a very particular style and and it would require a, a, a lot of prep work to to analyze that kind of thing. But in terms of the, the style, I think that's a, a very cool, uh, unusual style um, for an anime show. Uh, I love I love that the Japanese adopt a lot of Western ideas. They love classical music. They love gospel music. They they you know Christian groups in, in Japan will 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 sing gospel. Um, or, or some of this kind of not, I don't want to say saloon because saloon has kind of a, a, a Western draw, um, not draw, but kind of a slow feel. Uh, I did hear how fast paced that, that kind of music was. And, and I did see some of the fight scenes. And I was like, that, that's very unusual music for that kind of choreography. Um, so I, I like the quirkiness uh, of that. And it's almost like a juxtaposition um, where you're kind of expecting like drone synths and stuff like that for, for that kind of animation, but the color palette from what I saw, uh, I, I think fit just fine with, with that kind of scene. From the little I saw, <laughs> it was good music. All right, um, why don't we, I'll just, you know, I'll just talk about what I have, uh, uh, some thoughts and then I'll get back to chat and come back with your questions if, if you have. I did, I, I thought I was gonna do an impromptu like the prof, but you know, I, I need my notes. <laughs> so I wrote some notes in the last hour, uh, uh, just just things that I have been uh, practicing over the last you know five to six years since I've gotten my master's. So I, ha I have about five things, five key things on how to keep producing art in hard times. Now I say I stress hard times, difficult times, because 2020 has definitely pulled us out of our normal routine, uh, whether it's with a job or losing a job or accommodating for a relative or um, having your income reduced significantly, uh, maybe maybe even seeing someone who, who has been um, with uh, the illness and concerning the pandemic, uh, whether it's, you know, we, we've, we've closed things, we've shut things down. Uh, we've, we've seen churches shut down. You know, everything has really been brought to a halt this 2020. And we're, we're experiencing this together as, as, um, as a society. Millions and millions and billions of people are, well, I would say, I would say millions. You know, I, I, I we don't, I, I actually don't know what's happening in the third world countries, but the first world countries, we are experiencing this pandemic and it's really shaking us out of our normal routine. Now with that comes this almost urge. I, I was about to say propensity or tendency, but it's, it's this urge to shut down ourselves. It's this urge to to stop as the world is stopping. It's, it's the urge to um, kind of 
shut everything out and then, you know, maybe binge watch on, on TV or maybe something that is more fruitful, I think, is, is calling long hours on the phone with a relative or something like that. But it, it, it's something that we would, 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 um, wouldn't otherwise do because, because maybe we have more time on our hands um, as, as we're looking for work or, it, you know, it could be a number of things. What, whatever you guys are experiencing with this pandemic, uh, it, it it's felt all around us. It's not just an isolated thing with a family or with a person. It's 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 felt all all around the, our, our our country and and what's going on with you know escalations and and news and all this different stuff and of course abroad in in other countries. So when when something like this happens, that really brings us. To, to a halt and really shakes us up. It's imperative that we keep going, that we keep moving, even if our schedules have changed, especially as artists. And I think it's it's true of artists or Daniel Craig, engineer, you know, anyone in, in, in any discipline, it's important to keep as much of a routine intact. Or if you have no routine, like like you've lost work, make a new one uh, uh, to produce your art or to do your thing, wh whatever that thing is. Of course, I'm, I'm speaking to artists, but th this is true of anyone. You must have a routine of some kind. So that's the first thing. How to keep producing art in hard times, establishing a routine, even if it's a new one. I've, I've been blessed with, you know, while, while my students have a lot of students have gone and my income has been reduced. I've more or less maintained the same schedule. Uh, I, I, I don't budge with my schedule. If, if a student is 6.30 Fridays, they're, they're there to stay or they lose that slot and they have to find another slot. And usually they don't do that. They, they usually want their time. <laughs> um, so whether it's online or teaching the student in, in the classroom, I, I more or less have maintained my routine and I'm very thankful for that. But let's say... Let's say you're shaken up and, and you're, you're feeling disoriented. You're feeling frustrated. I, I've been kind of pulled apart. My, my attention has been pulled um, in so many directions myself, even as, as a disciplined person constantly working on her art. Let's say you're shaken up and you just you just need to focus on your art again. Maybe maybe you've been kind of on this sabbatical, if you will, for, for a month or two. And, and you're thinking, OK, now now we're getting into July. It's 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 time this year in 2020. I've. I, I, you know, to, to, to pull myself together and, and produce art. Well, with routine, the way to start that, the way to begin that is to schedule every activity. And, and I'm actually really focusing on art. I'm not focusing on your day-to-day -day activities as, as a functional human being. I'm, I'm talking about your art or your discipline. So any activity falling under your, your discipline. To establish a routine, schedule every activity and, and place that activity in a, in a specific part of the day. Not even so much the spe specific time of the day, but a specific part of the day. So for instance, and I've established this, you know, for about four years, five years now, learning and composing in Super Collider falls in the afternoon, a little bit after lunch and before teaching. Writing science fiction for me falls late in, in the evening after dinner. I might work on some music, maybe a Logic Pro project, maybe some tweaks or edits or, or whatnot, maybe about half an hour to an hour of, of music before I just tune in to just writing and I put my music behind me. But I'm actually trying to do it in a way where my music comes before my teaching. I teach and then I come home, make dinner and write. And I give, you know, it's about, for me, it's, it's been more or less a specific time. It's been between uh, 11.30 and 1.30 in the morning for, for my writing. That's, that's the general time frame. But I would say don't make your time too generic because routine will keep you centered. So let's say you're an artist, and, and I know you guys, uh, some of you out there work in comics. Let's say you draw and you work on writing your comic. Well, those actually are two specific activities that I think should be treated separately. For instance, 
let's say your best drawing time is, you know, in the evening, you know, eight to 10 before you go to bed. I would say then keep that your drawing time. If you do write and you have a 60 to 90 minute slot before you have to go to work, for instance, let that be your writing time. De designate different activities for, for specific uh, parts of the day, if that makes sense. Just ask any questions if, if you needed a clarification. But this has helped me. Routine has helped me. We'll get into sp spontaneity a little bit later as, as, as artists, because um, that's, that's going to be a warning. <laughs> so that's the first thing. To keep producing art in hard times, you must establish a routine. And let's say you have a different work schedule every day. But I would encourage you to, to look at that and say, well, okay, maybe my Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at my job are in the evenings, and then Tuesdays and Thursdays are mornings to early afternoons. That's still enough uh, rigidity to, to get you into a routine. So however you go about it, do your best to find an activity you need to work on and put it in a time of day or a part of day, mornings, afternoons, evenings, late into the night, what have you. To uh, number two, <laughs> the second thing uh, to keep producing art in hard times is to prioritize effectively set your priorities. I actually have a commentary video on this. I, I posted some months back. And if you want a, an extensive elaboration, I actually have my notes right above these bullet points here on how to effectively set your priorities as an artist. But I do have a video on that. It's one of my coffee break videos that's actually short enough to be a coffee break video. <laughs> um, you must be, in order to effectively set priorities, you must be as specific as possible and follow through with that. Look at your art, look and see what you want to do with your art a week from now, a month from now, a year from now. Uh, for me, I can actually, I, I know what I want to do. I know myself as an artist so well. I know what I want to do with my art, especially with my electronic music. And I can see five years out. I can see 10 years out because I know my favorite artists that I listen to, I'm thinking, oh, I don't have the skills for that. I, I might not have the equipment for that, or I might not have both. Maybe I need the skills and the equipment for that. But I know what I want to do. And I can I can I can ballpark thinking eh, this is gonna probably take me two to three, maybe even up to five years of, of getting to where I want to be. So really know yourself in that way. Look at your art and look at artists you aspire to become in in your you know your future self, thinking, oh, I really like this guy's style in illustration. I love this person's way of uh, writing novellas or plays or something like that. I, I like this kind of poetry. I want to, I want to keep getting to, to that next level, or maybe, maybe you want to get to the level where you're publishing, you know, a couple books every year. So, so see yourself there and then, then work backwards and get as specific as possible on how to work toward that. When you have an idea, get more specific. And when you arrive to that point, get more specific than that. I'm, I'm speaking from experience because when I came out of college, I knew I loved electronic music and I knew I loved sound design to the point where I was all over the map. I was, I was ready to write sound design for casino slots for a Chicago casino, uh, you know, um, game company. You know, I mean, and then then I then I thought I don't I, that might actually go against my my Christian principles, because I would write probably an enticing sounds that would enable people. <laughs> but 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 the point is, I, I was thinking, oh, I would like to do sound design for for games. What does that mean? Uh, sound design that I design myself from instruments, from virtual instruments, or foley work. You know, you know, recording footsteps and trees falling and stuff like that. I was all over the map. Then I got specific, thinking. No, it's experimental music, and it's it's music that I want to produce just from a composition perspective or a, a point where I'm just selling albums. And if people like that kind of music and say, hey, we could have you for a game or we could have you for a film, you know, of course, I would look the project over and see if it's worth it. But I was I was thinking, OK, sound design for games, sound design for film, music for film, music for games. I was, you know, 
pulled apart. And then I thought, no, I, I really like what I learned in, 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 in the universities. I, I want to still try to keep my experimental flavor, but also make it more accessible to, to, to the public square. So I, and getting to know myself actually as an artist was an organic process. It took about, it took about a good four years to constantly reevaluate what I wanted to do. So don't be afraid if that's you right now, if you're not sure, just constantly work. But I, I promise you, you, you will not know, you will not be able to evaluate and reevaluate until you put it and everything with it to practice and working on your art every day. See, I found what I wanted to do eventually because I was already working toward it, even if I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do. So get specific and, and really just take the time to prioritize what, what it is you want to do. <clears throat> All right. So first thing, establish a routine as soon as possible. Second thing is prioritize. Third thing is not that you ought to do it as step number three. You need to get this started as, as soon as possible, and that is practice. Practice your craft. And by practice, I mean frequency over time. I tell my students this all the time because I have student after student in, in the music studios only practicing once a week, only practicing maybe a couple times a week and not practicing every day. Frequency is more important than time. Frequency over time. It is more important. It's more effective to practice 10 minutes every day than 60, uh, 60 minutes one time a week. And the reason for that, and I didn't know this until I experienced this four to five years after practicing every day in, in things like super clatter and composing and also violin, but I, I've been doing violin for most of my life. What happens when you do frequency instead of time is that you start experiencing exponential growth with your intellectual capacity and your skills. You, you do things faster. I tell my students, Practicing gets you better faster. It's actually not a linear line. It's an exponential curve over time. Now, for me, that exponential curve did, did not really set in motion, probably not until three to four years of doing it every day. Might be different with you. Might be 10 years with you um, doing it every day before you actually see um, uh, a, a lot of that exponential speed. Um, so so think about that. Think about that you're, you're not progressively getting better linearly. You're, you're, you're starting very slow and then it will be a speedy ramp up once you apply your, 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 yourself to your craft every day. Give it a few years. You might not even see growth, but subconsciously, your, your body in your mind after picking up a lot of habits with doing your craft, your, your mind and, and your, your, your brain and your body, um, they're subconsciously picking up habits for you that you might not be aware of. And then five years from now, you might say, oh, I, I, you know, this took me months to get done. And now it's, you know, a matter of weeks, maybe even days. So frequency over time, frequency over time will get you exponentially faster, better, faster over time. The nice thing about frequency too is, is that you will no longer need discipline because it's habit. And when it becomes habit, when it, when it becomes uh, more automatic, then the time you spend on your craft also grows. So let's say you, you, you're just starting to commit and you're just doing 10 to 20 minutes every day, you know, for, you know, four to six weeks. What will tend to happen if you're faithful to your craft uh, is, is that that 10 minutes will become 15 minutes, will become 20 minutes, will become an hour. That's actually what happened with me in Super Collider. I, I gave myself a, a pocket of time just to commit to that pocket of time. And then before long, I was spending a good one to two hours in the program learning. So practice and practice practicing, practice applying yourself to your craft every day, even if it's five minutes even if it's five minutes, because especially at the start, the time doesn't matter. Now, I have students that react to this in two ways. One is, wow, five minutes? You're only asking me to do five minutes a day? I said, 
yeah, and you better do it every day. <laughs> and, and what happens is that the kids who respond positively to that, or, or um, I, I should say healthily to that, they, they actually go over five minutes and then they go over five minutes the next day. The other reaction is, well, five minutes is nothing, so what's the point? And then they don't practice. But those, those students show me that if they're not faith, faithful with five minutes, of course they're not going to be faithful with anything longer than that. So give yourself a little bit of grace, a little bit of flexibility. Give yourself about uh, you know, 10 minutes to your craft and make it part of your routine. Fourth thing, so we've got routine, prioritizing, practicing. The fourth thing has to do with endurance. And this is where I think a lot of artists struggle. You must do your art when you don't feel like it. I'll, I'll, I'll be real with you tonight. After my live stream, listen, I have a little bit of a headache, a little bit of a neck ache. And I'm on this awesome scene that I've dreamt for years. And you probably have heard me on my other stream say that and like, wow, that's a long scene. Yeah, it actually is a long scene. It's a huge buildup, but it's great. And I'm I'm on this part I've been dreaming to write, you know, for, for a number of years. I don't feel like writing it. <laughs> I don't feel like writing it. But after my stream, I'm going to have to. You know, I, I give myself a, um, a, a word count of up to 250. Uh, every day to, uh, you know, writing 250, um, 250 words every day. Sometimes I go to 350, 500. Uh, lately, I've, I've been, I've been knocking out a thousand words in 90 minutes. Um, it might be the scene. Actually, it might just be because it's just, it's just flowing right out of me. But sometimes I, even, even when that happens, sometimes I turn on my laptop and say, I just don't want to do this. Um, so you have to do your art when you don't want to. You, you can't, you can't say, well, I will, I will do it when I don't have a headache or I'll do it tomorrow after I have a good night's sleep. Now you don't want to be exhausted if, if you're totally exhausted or if you're, you know, if your body's broken down or you have the flu or something, you know, that's one thing. But if you want to switch on to, you know, Netflix or something, no, no, you have, you have to write. So, you know, do yourself a favor, write. And then watch your Netflix show. That's that's sometimes what I do with, with Sundays. You know, Sunday afternoons, I'll, I'll you know crank fifteen hundred words, and I'm like, yeah, time for some time for some He Man or something. <laughs> so um, do it first, and and do it when you don't feel like it, because you have to do it in that in that set time of day. For your art to thrive, it needs tending, even when you're tired, even when you hang, want to hang out with your friends. Um, treat your art like a farmer would treat his field and his livestock. You know, if and and migraines are no fun, and I'm so glad I'm not a farmer. <laughs> um, but but you know, when when the horse is about to give birth, that farmer is with that horse, no matter what he feels like. So treat treat your art like a field that needs to be tended to constantly. And with, with that are, are some other, a couple other war warnings, one of which I've just said, don't wait to be inspired. Inspiration will come as you work. I, I can promise you this is from firsthand experience. Also, do not be spontaneous. And I'm talking about your schedule. Now, this might be a contradiction to a lot of artists, uh, to, you know, spontaneity, oh, creativity, you know, excitement, all that kind of stuff. So I add with this, don't be spontaneous with your schedule, be spontaneous with your imagination. You know, the spontaneity outside your, your creative imagination and flow, that, that really doesn't matter. That, that really doesn't matter. What's going to be spontane um, spontaneous is, is in the process, in the thick of it. So that's, that's what I have to say about endurance. So recap, routine prioritizing, practicing endurance, do it when you don't feel like it. And how to begin all this, this is the fifth one, and this is my final point. I would suggest, because this is my own experience, start by committing to 30 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day. 
you may fall short one day. You may go over one day. And I will say, if you do go over, those aren't rollover minutes into the next day. You start fresh, minute one for, for the next day. But the point is, it must be every day. People say you need discipline. You do not need discipline all the way. You might need discipline maybe for the first two to three weeks, especially when adjusting to something like this, like, like a, a nationwide or really global pandemic. Give yourself that, practice that discipline for two to three weeks, maybe four weeks. But once you generate a habit from being disciplined, you don't need discipline anymore because it becomes automatic. So try your hardest, if you're not already doing this, try your hardest to do 30 minutes every day. Now, again, using the, the illustrator writer idea, if you're working on a comic and you do both, if you're an artist and a writer, that means 30 minutes of writing and 30 minutes of drawing and, and sketching and all of that and practicing your craft there. So for me, it was 30 minutes on Super Collider before it became, you know, two hours over time. And it was also violin. It was also working in Logic Pro and exploring instruments. So each activity that you have is, is, is what I would suggest. You know, and 30 minutes is actually about 2% of your entire day. That's 2%. So I, I think give yourself the service, the, the initiative to doing 2%. And I think everything will fall on into place, including understanding you know, yourself as an artist and, and what you want to do over time. And so that's what I have. Those are my tips on how to keep producing art in hard times. Number one, establish a routine as soon as possible if you haven't already. Number two, prioritize. Effectively set your priorities. I have a separate video on this, but if you want me to elaborate, let me know. Number three, practice, and, and of course, practice immediately. Um, even if you don't have a routine, practicing will automatically get you that routine. Practice, frequency over time, frequency over time. It's more important to do it every day. Number four, endurance. You must do it when you don't feel like it. You must do it. And number five, just commit, just start, if you haven't already, start 30 minutes every day. If you do 10 minutes, that that's the way it works, but you'll you'll start to accumulate time uh, the more you practice it. So that is what I have to say about that. Hopefully you like that. And this is just speaking from experience. This is how I've gotten to be pretty competent with Super Collider. Again, still a lot of things I have to learn in Super Collider, um, but that you know that's just an example of me constantly producing uh, the art I want to produce. And so hopefully you did like that. So let's uh, double check a few things. Let's check the chat. Should you begin a sentence with a conjunction? I'm, I'm hearing this a lot today. Um, I think, uh, are you talking about writing or speaking? Because speaking, you probably can't help that. <laughs> uh, writing, I think a conjunction is just fine if it's a complete sentence. So if you have the word but to begin the sentence, if it's followed by a first clause and a second clause, I think that's totally legitimate, but I'm no grammar teacher. <laughs> I don't teach English. So if you, if you, if you grammar police out there want to take me down, go for it. But I think it's fine. Daniel Craig says, in my case, the advice wasn't related to strain, but it wasn't conducive to actually learning. That's also bad advice. Uh, you know, advice on how to prevent yourself yourself from from learning more. Yeah, that's that's not good advice. Agent Boomer asks a pretty good question: Do hard times stifle creativity? I think it can. 
but it's up to the person, the creative person, just to move through, to plow through. Um, for me, if you're curious, uh, staying creative and and producing work, even if you're not feeling that mode of um, or that um, uh, motive to to create. I think I said that right. If, if you're not feeling the urge to create, um, keep. Uh, keeping myself moving uh, really does help me through the hard times because, oh, it, what it does is um, it keeps me focused and it keeps me centered. You don't want to be bombarded. No one wants to be built. No one wants to be bombarded with these, these the, the news and, and, and all the bad stuff happening. And to, to get centered and to get focused is to continue with what you have been doing. It's not to say you can't regard someone's unfortune it's not to say you should ignore people uh, in, 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 in what they're going through and, and certainly bless them if you can with, with, with your time, with your encouragement, maybe taking them out to lunch if, if, if they're needing um, encouragement and, and you helping them build morale. Of course, be a human being. Don't, don't shut yourself out complete, completely from the world. But I would say my work in my art is what keeps me focused. It, it, it's what keeps me centered. And especially if you have the motive to bring people delight with your art, I think that's a service to the world that is much needed. And I think it would be much appreciated. People want to see good, you know, good things. And, 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 and people are inspired by seeing artists do their thing and saying, yeah, I, I really like your... I really like your comic. I really like your story. I really like what you did with your music and all of that. Um, for, for me personally, uh, I'm, I'm just happier when I, when I work in my art. And so I would encourage artists to not use 2020 as an excuse. And, and I know that sounds a little, um, uh, I don't want to say callous because I, I feel like I use that word too much. <laughs> um, but, but 2020 shouldn't be an excuse to, to stop doing it because actually you really shouldn't stop. No one should stop as much as they can, as much as it's in their power and their control. They, they shouldn't stop from, from living even, even in difficult times. Professor Geek says, any time management tips when it comes to carving out a regular time for your art? Yeah, I think for, for my, from my experience, it's, it's setting a time for a specific activity. So as, as, as I said, with my electronic music, it's a little bit before lunch, a little bit after lunch, and then it's teaching because I teach in the evenings. And then when I come home, it's, it's writing. And that has been, been very good for me. Now everyone's different. You know, you know, people say you gotta you gotta wake up at four in the morning and hustle. I'm like, that's not gonna be me. <laughs> but I have found that you don't know, don't be so uh so specific with your time. But I would say don't be so generic or don't be so spontaneous. Artists have a um, kind of a spontaneous streak about them because you know we're so creative. But I would say as far as scheduling, no. I have to say, you guys, the best thing for me after getting my master's was to have an eight to five job because I, I, I learned the value of routine. I learned the value of a consistent uh, sleep schedule and a consistent work schedule, consistent commute schedule. And, and, and I, I did from probably six to 1030 every night on, on, on weeknights, I, I, I dedicated to my art and my practice. So that, that has helped me truly. Daniel Craig says, Jerry Seinfeld used to schedule office time for himself every day, just like he was going to a normal job and he would write jokes no matter how bad they were for consistency. Smart guy. Yeah. And I had heard that. I, I had heard his uh, kind of how, how he crafted his, his standup. And I, I think that's important. People, people need a, an office time. I think that's, yeah, exactly. I, I agree. 
Logan asks, is it better to finish many projects quickly or put more work into fewer projects? What's the best way to find balance between the two? That's a really good question. Um, my experience, and this is just from my experience, is that if I have too few projects in between, uh, between time, for instance, uh, let's say I have <clears throat> three, three music projects over the span of six months, I actually tend to, if I'm not careful, I can, I can get burned out on all the projects and, and they actually become a little haphazard in, in the creation. Uh, what I suggest is not, not do so, something so extreme if, if, if you're not for producing frequently is maybe have a month. Now, it, it's interesting. That's a great question, Logan, because um, for 2020, I, I set to release a piece of music every, every month, mixed, mastered, and all of that. Around May, around May, I decided to stop that. Part of it was the pandemic, but the pandemic actually helped me reevaluate what I wanted to do. And what, I, what I've been needing to do is cons consistently build my skills in Super Collider. So working on MIDI scoring in Super Collider, granular synthesis, um, a little bit of sound synthesis and live input processing and, and all of that. I, I, I haven't done enough in actual sound synthesis in Super Collider. And it, it was wearing on me kind of in the back of my head saying, you, you said you were gonna do this 2019 and it's in the middle of 2020. And so I thought, okay, um, I, I know I can compose and produce something every month, which is great. I, I, did, I did about four pieces and I have something coming, uh, oh, what, what day is it? July 13th, I have something coming. <laughs> um, and then I'm trying to also explore how to perform with Super Collider on a live stream. So this year has, I've sort of reoriented building a, a very specific skill in Super Collider so I can, I can continue working and, and producing the art that I love, producing the music I love. That said, I, I, even though I'm focused on Super Collider, I can't go too long without releasing a piece of music. So yes, this year is probably going to be a couple of months in between before I release a single or an album, whatever the case may be, whatever uh, the the year um, is 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 uh, uh, set out for me. You know <laughs> what what's on the table there. Um, so I would go. I would go between. I would practice. Uh, let's see. I think. You, um, well, what about this also? Is it better to finish many projects quickly or pu put more work into fewer projects? Um, I will say this, albums, like eight track albums, eight to 10 track albums, they take months to prepare, uh, you know, if you want a quality album. So something, a project like that every few months, that's fine. But what if it's a, what if it's a small piece of music, you know? Um, so instead of, a, you know, so if you, for instance, were to compose an orchestral piece, Logan, for your, for your doctorate, Oh yeah, I would I would say three to four months probably is is the time that you need. But let's say you compose a solo clarinet piece with pure data. Give yourself a month or even sooner just to see just to see how fast you can produce it. I don't know if you work in pure data, but that was my uh I think some if you're in electronic music in in, in schools, I think I think they still work in that software. Daniel you know, Craig says the Japanese are very good at adopting aspects of other cultures and complete completely making it their own. Well, I they have a very specific Japanese culture, uh, and I think they know you know Beethoven is definitely Western, for instance. Um, but yeah, they well, I mean, man, Japanese music education is hardcore. I mean, there are seventeen year olds that can they would. They could dance circles around me. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, like with Bach and Beethoven, but uh, yeah. Hello, Zeal. Good to see you again. Ideas around motivation, inspiration, follow action after, oh, excuse me. Let me read this correctly. Ideas around motivation, inspiration, following action have popped up in other domains too. The rock climber, Dave McLeod, or McLeod, how do you pronounce that? Has a great video on exactly that. Good. Awesome. Thank you for the recommendation. I will check that out and see what that person has to say. Very good. 
thank you for joining. Sound engraver, uh, do you find certain times of day work better for your certain activities or do you have to force yourself at the scheduled time no matter how you feel? Well, that, that actually both. So for instance, science fiction writing, unless it's Sunday after church, science fiction writing has always been in the evening for me. You know, I, I even have kind of a, a time slot, you know, between 1130 and um, 130. Or, you know, like if 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 I'm doing rewatches, for instance, it might, might push out a little bit more. Um, but yeah, kind of that kind of that midnight to, to 2 a.m. is is my writing time. I, I I sometimes I will keep working on music until 1230 or one. And I, I end up getting frustrated even when I'm productive because it's like, no, that's my writing time. I gotta, I gotta do my writing time. Um, so that is, that is important. So late evenings is science fiction for me. It, it always has been, uh, unless it's Sunday and, um, you know, getting late morning into the early afternoon has been music. I, I spend time with, in scriptures, in the Bible, in the morning. I got to get up earlier, a little bit earlier than I usually do, because I I also need to make time for reading nonfiction. And I haven't I've sort of, I think I've been going a week without reading nonfiction, which is kind of bad. Um, but so that that's my morning activity. Scriptures, breakfast, black coffee with scriptures and reading some nonfiction, and then getting getting to work. Oh, um, and and in addition to that, you, you also uh, asked me another question, or do you have to force yourself at the scheduled time no matter how you feel? Um, I will say this. Yes, you, you have to force yourself to do something even if, even if no inspiration comes from it. I will say, though, for me, having it scheduled a certain time, and especially over time, if it's, if it's, if it's become a habit, I don't really need to force myself, so to speak. It's automatic. And I think that's what people are looking for that. And your cre your creativity is not stifled because you become almost auto automatic. Things are things are just kind of set to a default, if you will. Your your creative your creativity doesn't suffer for that. I, I hope people aren't getting that idea, like, oh, if I'm not spontaneous or oh, if I don't write when I'm motivated, my 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 art will be stagnant. No, it's it's actually uh, been opposite. The, the opposite has been the case with, with my experience. So I, I wouldn't be too worried it, for, for being rigid. And now you may do this for six weeks to six months and say, this isn't for me. I need to be kissed by the muse. <laughs> but if you do get kissed by the muse, then you have to finish your project. And that's the other thing too. Finish your projects, no matter how bad they are. Just no matter how bad they are, finish your projects. That's that's the other discipline is you have to finish what you start. You can't start and then start something else and then start something else and 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 all of that. And I mean the, the same activity. So I can't start composing a piece and then start composing another piece and then another piece having not finished the other two. I have to finish what I start, even if it's some you know, three minute experimental granular synthesis piece that really doesn't come to anything. I, I have to finish it. I have to finish it. That that's part of producing art is you gotta you gotta finally end up finishing the art. And and a lot of stuff to be fair, guys, even even with a lot of practice, a lot of stuff might not be good. I admit a lot of my stuff uh that I that I produce, I can dress it up, but in, in my ears it's like, oh I could have done better. But Finishing it and, and releasing it is also just as important. And Daniel says, never underestimate the advantage to lacking equipment. Sometimes being forced to be clever with what you have produces better results. Yes, and actually, yeah, that you you had something about equipment or something. Like you have all the equipment and uh and it, it might not come to anything. That's another thing. I'm glad you brought up that point. Guys, your art is more important than the equipment. So you, you cannot you cannot wait to practice your art until you get that 
$100 stylized pen. Like, well, no, no, no. My favorite artist is doing it with this pen. Um, I need to, I need to wait until I have this pen to stylize. Uh, no, no, don't be afraid of producing not so stylized art or not so good art. You, you just, you just have to practice the, the, the software that my favorite artists are. I don't even know the software they're using. And I, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I would just love to sound like some of their, their, their pieces. Um, and I don't think logic can offer that. Maybe, maybe it can. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, but I, I have a very, very limited library. And so I'm, I'm kind of working with, you know, things like Super Collider with sound synthesis and granular synthesis to, to kind of come up with some of those ideas. Um, but if you, if you have it, whatever you need, yeah, you know, whatever you need for your art, do it. Budget for that and, and make it a very small budget, you know under $200 if it gets, if it, if it gets the, the work done. So for instance, all the music you hear that I have online on Spotify, on Bandcamp, that's all done with under a thousand dollars worth of equipment that I bought over the years. Now I would love a music studio. You know, I'm not really a materialistic person, but if I am, it's having a music studio. I would love a $10,000 music studio. I would love you know, $10,000 worth of software and, and, and all that stuff. But until I get to that point and, and save up money to that point, I'm building the skill as, as much as I can with what I have. So yeah, Daniel Craig, that, that's a very good point. You, you have to be resourceful with what you have. Don't, don't buy equipment until you've put in the practice. That's, that's my experience. Daniel Heron says to Daniel, but I, I'm sure I can have my, provide my, my input there. So true. Been thinking about converting the garage for over 10 years. Finally got motivated using tall bookcases, salvage doors, mixed paint colors. It's different, but me, that sounds awesome. Dr. Y says, practice your craft. Wait a minute. I thought this was an art and music stream, not learning magic. What's up with this? It is magic. You know, magic is uh, what? Wow. Never mind. I was I was about to say something clever, and then I I it left my mind. So sorry. <laughs> uh, Daniel Craig says, "I wish I still had a link to an article I read that really emphasizes the proper technique you should use when practicing a technique to max maximize." your potential. Do you remember the title of the, the, the article? I'm sure, I'm sure there are YouTube channels and, and articles all about this. The article was basically, it was actually the basis for my complaints about the way I was told to practice tango. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can, you can certainly learn the wrong technique. I remember like, so I, I teach this teacher's kid, um, and he gives me grief. Well, I don't see him that much now since since we've kind of been been low key at, at the studio since this pandemic. But um, he, he just gives me so much flack. And, and I teach his son. And I said, listen, you better watch yourself because I can I can give your son the wrong technique. <laughs> I probably wouldn't do that because that'd probably cause carpal tunnel. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can definitely be taught the wrong stuff, too. Sound engraver, I would like to know, uh, uh, this is Daniel Craig, I'd like to know uh, what electronic artist piece you first heard or remember hearing and what finally convinced you that that genre, genre was for you. Um, I think it was, it was just kind of browsing on YouTube. Well, I first started, okay, I'll tell you a little story. My last, my last college paper, my graduate paper was on um, Verdi. Verdi's operas, his Shakespearean opera Macbeth, written in 1844, I think, 1840, no, 1848, I think, and his Shakespearean opera Otello, um, 1888. I, I can't remember the exact dates, but I think they were 40 years apart. And it was a, it was a very interesting topic, but I remember I was so done with school by then that I just started listening to stuff like 
uplifting trans art <laughs> and, and watching, uh, looking at concept art when I should have been looking at Verity and his Shakespearean operas and stuff like that. And so I would start judging up these scenes like, oh, this, this would be a good science fiction. Um, I, I was, but in college I was writing my speculative novel. So it was, I was already kind of browsing for some music that would draw on inspiration. And, and the stuff that I listened to wasn't totally excellent, totally great, but it, 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 it inspired me to, you know, write this kind of speculative piece of work, my novel. And, uh, um, I, I think I started, if I can remember that far back, I think I started with game soundtracks that were cover songs, electronic cover songs. Uh, I, I follow this channel. He doesn't really post that much, uh, but he, he's a good guy. Uh, his name, his channel name is Wavelength. Um, and, and he, pretty, pretty good, pretty good stuff. Uh, post-production, I mean, he, he did this, I think, when he was like in his early 20s. I, I get that sense that he's, he's quite young. I think, I think that's, that's his YouTube name. And he, he does these cover, a couple cover songs from um, Ducky Kong Country 2. And so I started listening to that. And then I started listening to, you know, upbeat, you know, kind of trance, uplifting trance. And then I got into more down tempo. And, and I, then I got into more experimental down tempo uh, in, in, in the French scene, Scandinavia, Russia, Greece, uh, England, Denmark. And so started listening to art, artists of, of that, that caliber. So it, it, again, everything was really a, an organic process, but it, it, it started with me being kind of just daydreaming about uh, an awesome scene in science fiction that could have been an amazing TV series. And I was like, I would totally help produce this TV series and write music for it. I was like, wait a minute, this TV series is not going to exist. I better write it. And that's, that's my space opera that I'm, I'm working on right now. So there you go. Welcome to my world. Yeah, true. Giving yourself grace can be one of the hardest things to do. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get down to business to defeat. Oh no, not to defeat. To complete the arts. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. Wolf 10 Media says personal accountability goes a long way. Something most teachers don't teach that to students these days. Yeah, and I'm pretty strict with my students. I mean, man, I just... On the one hand, I, I can't be too strict with my students because that might cause um, more social problems, of course, you know, with, with you know, parents who just want to have them have fun with music lessons. There's there's that fine line of having fun with music and then seeing that, like, I don't like music. It's so hard. I was like, it's so hard because you don't practice. You, did you know that you get better? I, from the few years that I have taught, like, I could count on my hand how many times, like, a student will get wide-eyed and say, whoa, I didn't know I could do that. I was like, you see? It's like that it's all it takes is hard work and then then you can sound good <laughs> they're like whoa i sounded good <laughs> it's like yeah isn't that amazing do or do not there is no try you know you know that that yoda's dialogue you know how he the, he's got his grammar now so certain are you or something like that um he only peppers that kind of dialogue in Empire Strikes Back. Uh, th there, um, there are sentences, complete, you know, you know, basic English grammatically structured sentences that he says. And then we kind of just gave him a stereotype. <laughs> Did they send me pencils when I asked for pens? That's funny. Wait, were we supposed to be taking notes? You can always take notes. I take notes. So I'm, I'm okay with impromptu on live stream, but I, I just kind of like to have bullet points just in case. But the very chewy topics, I, I have to have like a whole list of notes. I gotta do this. <laughs> You're the cheap set. Oh wait, 
that I ever bought, but I bet before we're through, somehow I'll make some art out of you. This is great, guys. This is fantastic. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Daniel Craig says, can I add, when you're practicing, do not bully your way through a difficult section. If it's something like learning a song, instrument, stop and repeat anything that's complicated. Yeah, um, mull over it, work through it, absolutely work through it. Uh, when you say bully your way, are you saying don't be hard on yourself? Don't be hard on yourself. I mean, be disciplined, get through it, but don't don't be angry with yourself. Uh, that that's that's another thing I have to work with students is because um, kids is as 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 for the little they practice, they're 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 hopeless perfectionists. So you know, some something that I work with students, you, you know, one girl today, you know, her tone is not working, but that was not my concern. It was moving through the beat and working through the quarter notes and not stopping between measures when there were, were there were no pauses, there were no rests. And she said, I'm feeling like my squealing is because my bow is doing this. And I love that she's observing. I love that she's kind of assessing what what's causing that, that, that tone. But I was like, listen, we'll get to your tone <laughs> but the most important thing is to keep the beat the rhythm the beat is what makes it the music it's it, it is tone but tone must come second and 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 she actually listened uh, last you know she listened to my instructions last week because this week she went through the song without pausing and and she stayed on the beat and then we worked on tone and so it's 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 pretty amazing that um uh, but but I've, I've seen students angry with themselves and I'm not angry with them, but they're like, oh, I can't do it. And and you, yeah, so you have to work. You have to work through it and and definitely be patient with yourself because I, I troubleshoot in super clatter from time to time. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> so. Logan says, also, I've been starting to reach points in the day where I check out and I'm wondering if it's better to get more discipline to squeeze in more working time out of the day or, oh, yeah, or to take more time off and focus on getting higher quality work out of a smaller amount of time. What has been your experience with this? Um, I think the high quality comes from the frequency. So whatever, whatever form that might look, um, you know, I still, even six years after getting my master's, I, sometimes I feel like some of my stuff is subpar. And, and that's just part of the process. Um, and, and you can evaluate and kind of, you know, be your own, you know, critique and, and critical thinker. There are, you know, there are days, there are times in the days where I check out. Um, well, in, in that case, take a break, maybe take a walk, maybe cook a meal, and then maybe come back to it because I definitely get a second wind. Um, I, I kind of check out, you know, around, you know, 730 after I teach, you know, eight o'clock. And then I, I get my second wind around 10 p.m. or 10:30, and so, you know that that's that's a perfect time. You know, if I drive from work to home, I just think, I just daydream, I ruminate. Uh, then I cook dinner, I wash up, you know, and then kind of just, uh, you know, just think. I, I love daydreaming. For instance, I, I, I'm a I'm a I'm a huge daydreamer. So um, that that might actually be your reprieve before you might have that second wind. Uh, but what I would say is, I mean, th actually that is a worthy goal, by the way, higher quality amount of work in, in, in a smaller amount of time. That's not automatic in my experience. Like um, when I say automatic, that's not right away. That's not immediate. That, that kind of thing does take practice, but it does happen. It does happen with practice. So absolutely. So that, that's a worthy goal. Let's see, I hope I answered your question completely. I'm wondering if it's better to get more discipline. Uh, I'm wondering if it's if it's better to get more discipline to squeeze in more working time out of the day. Um, with me, you know, you start you start with a certain amount. So I'm recommending 30 minutes for everyone, and then over time, with me, it was a matter of weeks before I started making it 45 minutes a day to an hour a day to two hours a day. You actually start building that. Uh, endurance and um, I'm trying to think of the word right now. Dexterity, ca uh, not caliber. 
I'm blanking on the word I'm thinking of, but you know what I mean. You, you start building that threshold. Okay, your threshold was here at 30 minutes. Now, now it's here at an hour and 30 minutes, you know. So I would say the, the frequency actually will better your time. So, so it, it, your skills actually and your quality get, get better exponentially over time. But what also happens is time itself becomes, well, not totally exponential. I mean, we do have, you know, so many minutes in a day. Um, but there, there's a like, oh, 10 minutes to, you know, 10 minutes used to be a huge deal for some people. Then it was 90 minutes. And then it was, you know, two and a half hours, you know, give or take. Um, and now I would say, and I've been saying this to my students, I would, I would start a little bit easy, easier and a, a little bit more reasonable in, in such a year that we have where, 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 you know, I don't know about you, but things just pull my attention a lot, a lot faster now with, with, with times like these. And it might be the same with you guys. Um, so I hope that helps Logan. I, 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 I think I got the gist of what you were saying. So, um, let me know. <clears throat> Professor Geek says, great point on frequency. I've skipped more practicing some days to wait for, um, I've skipped practicing some days to wait for when I could spend more time. But the more time we stay away from the flame, the harder it is to get, uh, to stoke it again. Absolutely. That's a good way of putting it. It's like embers, but embers die. They go, you know, they, have you ever like sat next to a fire, see the fire die and then have you ever like waited long enough to see the embers go too? And, and that's the same. That That's the same way where I, I, I've seen with people and, and myself included too in, at some points in my life where, where I'm like, well, I, I only have 10 minutes today. Okay, that's fine. Use it. You know, what I, what, I, what I tell my students, the hardest part of practicing a violin is to pull the instrument out of its case. That's the hardest part. And then you look at the music, you go through it, and then ta-da, you're done. Your 15 minutes are up. So yeah, I, I think that's, I, I think actually, Prof, that's, that's what a lot of people, um, maybe not intentionally, maybe they don't, they don't mean to do this, but you know, like, okay, I have all day Saturday, because here's what happens. Let's say you have all day Saturday. Well, if you're not used to doing it frequently, you're not going to have that attention span and that focus to doing it all day. You might have an hour, you might have two hours, which is great, but that's actually one to two hours you could have done in the span of five to six days anyway. Um, why I can, lately in, in my science fiction writing, I've been knocking out a thousand words in under 90 minutes uh, because, because I've done it so frequently. That's the only reason why that is. And that's not every day. That's not all the time. That's probably, it's been, I would say a few times in the last couple of weeks, just because I've been so focused, but that's because, you know, I built that, that, uh, tolerance, I guess, like that kind of my, my, my mental capacity is insulated and, and it can't be permeated when I have that focus, that, that, that laser, you know, point focus, but that's from practicing. Nice. I, I love it. You guys are just writing these lyrics. Tranquil at a river with an ocean within. Am I singing that right? Once you find your style, you are sure to win. Hindsight is 2020. Yeah, I know. Isn't that strange? People were so excited for 2020. It's like new decade. <laughs> And then I get, I, then I see on like these big name sci-fi authors on Twitter, like sucked up all my energy. Don't let, don't let a year, even, even for all the bad things that we see happening, don't let a year suck up the energy. That's the thing is that's a year. That's a whole year. And I promise you that you guys are doing, um, you know, you're doing a good by, by fostering and practicing your craft because people, people want that kind of stuff. They want, they want a reprieve. You know, I would love to compose music that just helps people get away from their, their day or their office or whatever. 
and and have kind of a chill mellow tone to to kind of tune into or with my science fiction writing it's it's an adventure it's it's kind of scary it's kind of tense it's it's not scary actually it's well it's absurd it's kind of frightening in some cases it's not horror but it's it's a, it's a way to es escape people are in space having an adventure you know people want people want a, a, a way out at least just for like an hour or two Daniel Craig says, speaking of super collider, I would like to see how all of that scripting integrates with the rest of your DAW. Oh, you mean code? You'd have to ask a programmer for that. All I do is just, uh, all I do is just set up some MIDI protocol and, and that's it. I'm not a programmer though. I, I, I wouldn't know the ins and outs of the code behind the code. Uh, Agent Boomer says, do you read creative nonfiction like memoir or personal essay? Um, I actually, I'm, I'm trying to get into more history. And I actually, the, the book I'm reading now has more of an, an overview of history, the history of actually of higher education in, in America, um, based on a professor, I think he, I think he taught in the sixties. Um, I, I don't read biographies. Uh, for the for the longest time, I read nonfiction that was more out of the entrepreneur or motivational speakers. But then a lot of it just kind of, a lot of it sounded like it was fluff. A lot of it was saying stuff I already knew. It's like okay, I need I need to read stuff I don't know. <laughs> and so I'm trying to actually get, get back into history, and and as much as I can. But I see again carving out time for nonfiction because of course I'll read the Bible because I just have to. Um, but. And that that that's what sets my day and makes makes me centered as a Christian and in my faith. But um, then then I'm like, oh, it's it's twelve thirty. I got I got to start composing, and so I'll, I'll kind of skip nonfiction, and which is not good. I, I got to actually make time for some nonfiction. Mr. Matchstick says Symphony X or Dream Theater. You know, I should check out Symphony X because I don't know anything about Symphony X, but Dream Theater, that's my band. They follow me on Twitter. Jordan Rudis follows me on Twitter. And I love his music and I love their music. And I, I even follow John Petrucci on Twitter. And he does just guitar stuff. I don't know anything about guitar. But it's fun watching him. Jay Dean, welcome. Glad to have you. Less is more. Very true at times. I'm writing with paper and pencil. And, and it's coming better to me. Good. Good. You know, just just work with what you have and, and you'll you'll find it. I mean, you, you get better with whatever you do have as long as you apply yourself. Yeah, for sure. Dr. Y says, I would love to have an animation art studio. But as the old Disney song goes, you've got to do with what you got. I don't know that song. I don't know the melody. think oh this is this is the chorus isn't it i'm not gonna try to sound that out <laughs> uh daniel says i don't remember the name of the article but if i had more than 200 words i would explain the entire article i mean you could keep writing right <laughs> uh which trans artists were you listening to uh i listened to I, I've, I've put these names in before, but I'll, I'll do it again. Um, go to is Sean Pius. Um, he's phenomenal. I don't know if he does recent things, uh, uh, but his old stuff is great. Just good stuff. Um, his, his song Lift is probably the most popular. And then Daniel Candy. Oh, you know, I've got a, I've got an album on Spotify I refer to from time time to time and and there are some artists that I'm, I'm not thinking right away uh, on the uh, uplifting trance i'm not so much in the heavy like goa trance or the psychedelic trance um not because i'm i'm principally against it fundamentally as a christian um i i can be sober and still enjoy music i don't need to be induced um it, it's it started when I was younger that that, that real fast beat da, 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 you know that that was 
that was fine when I was in, in my twenties, but now that as I'm getting older, I'm like, I'm, I'm too chill. It's like, whoa, this is, this is really upbeat. I'll, I'll try to find, um, wavelength. Hey man. D did, did, did you catch me? Welcome. Did you catch me recommend, <laughs> recommending your channel? Yes. That's awesome. If you haven't, what a coincidence. Glad to have you. Um, you're, you were my first electronic artist that I started exploring. Uh, when I finally get that spark of inspiration when I make music, I literally shut myself off from the world for the whole weekend. Not the healthiest thing to do. Bro, you're, if you are bro, I actually don't know if you're a bro or not. Um, but you, your, your music's always great. And I would, I would love to hear more of your stuff if you're, if, cause I, I'm subscribed to your channel. Um, yeah, good to have you, man. That's awesome. Welcome. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, I, I'm missing some people. Oh yeah, Wolf 10 Media, no problem. This is a lovely stream, but I must now depart to the cool kids. Ishii and Kat, they are pretty cool. Y'all have a lovely evening and stay safe. Thank you. JD says, uh, I love music, but I also have perfect pitch, which was raised on and was raised on Van Halen. So I am I love playing the guitar now. Good for you. Good for you. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, thank you for clarifying that phrase. Uh, by bully, I, I mean, don't keep going. Yeah, you have to keep going. Very good. Now, actually, you guys, I might have to step away for a couple of minutes um, if you had any um, other questions. But, uh, you, you know, it's it's summer. I had to drink more water than I probably should in AC. But I will be back in a couple of minutes. And then we'll probably wrap things up probably around 1130. So one second. All right. And actually, you know, um, Daniel Craig and if Wavelength, if you're still on, let me go ahead. I'm going to go on to Wavelength's channel and um, find. Oh, no. Where? OK, there it is. Um, I'm going to find his. I, I think it's he. I'm sorry, Wavelength. I don't know your real name. And it is. There. Okay, so that's the Rave and the Hive. Yes, yes, Rave and the Hive was oh, it's good stuff. Uh Rave and the Hive, cover art for uh cover music for Donkey Kong Country 2. And this is really this is really where I started exploring electronic music outside the academics and changed my world. 
thanks to you, Wavelength, you, you, you really helped change my world. In fact, I listened to your music when I first started writing, first started writing my speculative novel. Um, so it really takes me back, I think back to 2012, I think. So let me go ahead and I think I, I think I pasted, um, pasted that. Yes. So that's the number that really did inspire me to just really explore electronic music um, out, outside the concert hall. Logan says, I felt like I went through all of undergrad making no progress, and I'm just now starting to see the start of that exponential curve. I'm wondering how to keep it going outside school. Um, well, first, the first thing to do is, and, and this take this can take years. It, it's not like a, an instantaneous answer. Um, well, the answer is instantaneous, but only because I have the experience to answer it. <laughs> um, take your time evaluating what you want to do with music or electronic music, whether that's continuing in, in the academic field or um, using a lot of what you learned in the academic field and trying to apply it in um, um, an industry setting like game music or, or, or sound design or something like that. And then once you, but, but I, I, I have to say that you, you really don't know what you want until you practice. At least that's from my experience. Like, I want to do all this. Okay. I just realized I want to do this. <laughs> um, so just, I would say just keep practicing and, 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 and moving through the frequency. I remember actually Logan, after I got my master's, I thought I didn't want anything to do with experimental music. And then I remember months after getting my master's, I was, I was in my living room, I was playing my violin and I did all that kind of extended technique stuff and, and it really did a lot of improvising. And then I, I came back to thinking, well, I want to do something that is more uh, mainstream or to the, to the public square, but still keeping my, my ex experimental roots that I had learned in the academic setting. Um, but none of that could have come to fruition. None of that could have been answered. I, I could not have answered that without having explored every day. So even let's say you, you don't know, and, and this isn't just to you, Logan, it's to anyone who, who might face this. Let's say you don't know what you want. You know, for, for me, I was like, well, I know it's electronic music, but how, you know, what, what do I want to do? Just, just explore that. That's a part of the practice. And, and, and I think that will be just fine. You'll, you'll arrive, you'll arrive to the answer you need the more you practice, even if the answer takes about five years to get to, because <laughs> uh, that was my experience. Daniel, no, <laughs> no. See, I have a practice mute that 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 I put the practice mute on my violin bridge, and it and it absorbs like eighty percent of the sound. Thoughts on kettle drums? I was thinking my neighbors would love it if I practice at four a.m. You know, I know the I know the prof stays up until probably five a.m. and he wouldn't love it. So you can imagine neighbors who actually sleep those hours of the night. Kettle drums. <laughs> oh, please don't do that. I, I'm I'm a musician who wants to watch out for her her neighbor or neighbors. I also don't want I don't want that rivalry. Like if I practice loud and then people just you know they they start banging on their music, you know, or, or, you know, pumping up the bass or something like that. I don't want that. Daniel Craig says you, you create a mini what now? That sounds like the thing I want to see to understand how it works. Oh, okay. I have, I have videos on super collider, um, you know, uh, how to set up a mini score or, or working with a mini score. I do demos. I don't really, my, my, my super clutter videos aren't tutorials in that I teach you how to do it. That's, that's Eli's wheelhouse. That's his baby. Cause he's the best teacher. Eli field steel is the best teacher on super clutter. He's pretty much the only teacher on super clutter out there on YouTube. I'm not saying super clutter professor, you know, in schools, I mean, publicly accessible on YouTube. Um, so I do demos to show, pretty much the syntax I've been practicing, what I've learned from Eli and then and 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 showing it to to people who are interested in my channel. Uh, but MIDI protocol. So what I mean by that is um, Super Collider and uh, Logic Pro can can connect 
or any DAW really for that matter that has the MIDI protocol uh, by SuperClatter uh, initializing MIDI messages to, to, to your device, to your DAW. And there's a method to that. It's called connect all. I think I'd have to look. <laughs> Professor Geek says, other than the different times of day, what differences do you have to take into account when trying to maintain practice your music versus maintaining practicing your writing? Hmm. Well, with music, with music, I'm I have to prioritize extensively because I work in a lot of different things in music. It could be just Logic Pro. So it could be just one software. It could be two softwares. It could be learning three skills in one software, learning another skill or finishing a project in another software. With music, I'm roping in. Um, I'm roping in about five different things that I want to improve on uh, in, in music specifically. Uh, in composition and building technique and all of that with writing it's because you're you know you're a professor of english um writing for me is just practicing and hoping i'm getting better at writing <laughs> uh I, I i know someone's an editor i i think someone here is an editor uh you see his face right now <laughs> uh professional editor so as as far as that like i uh, that's actually once I have it drafted, that that's that's to send to someone else, you know, in, in terms of writing, because I'm I'm not a professional writer in that I know the the mechanics and the details and the technicalities like I like I know with music that I have practiced with music. Um, writing, I would say, is a little more free flow for me because I I, I want to be a writer, but not the way I want to be a musician and a composer in that I do want to be a professional musician and composer creating income with my music. If, if it comes to that, I hope it comes to that. Maybe not. Um, we'll see. Um, but that, that's the goal, of course, creating experimental music and, and also a side income with that. With writing, oh, sure, I would love to make money off of my stories, but my stories have to be out. Now, actually, I, 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 I want to be careful saying this because I'm going to continue composing music even if I never make a dime off of my music. It's just, it's just my love. It's just what I have to do. I have to create music. I have to bring joy to people. That's just what I have to do. I have to experiment. That's just what I have to do. But I'm also working on uh, creating, establishing, establishing a business with it. A very slow establishing at that. <laughs> um, but with, with, uh, with writing, it's more, it's, it, there's almost a more liberal approach to writing because while I know I'm building skill in writing and, and, you know, editing and getting better with prose, getting better with dialogue, getting better with pacing, looking for those things, reading for, you know, looking out for those things when I read fiction, uh, it's, it's a bit more of that kind of free flow output kind of thing. And then the draft will be taken into, you know, of course, a professional to, to look over because uh, I'm not a professional editor. I, I know very little about that. So I'm a professional musician who's had experience in music, who can um, assess those technicalities and analyze those, um, you know, analyze those little details in music that I, I can't otherwise do with, uh, with, with editing my draft. I hope that answered your question. <laughs> uh, but, but as far as frequency and practice, it, it is the same. It is very much the same. Sound Graver and Professor Geek ever do or plan to do a video about planning on doing art or story as people tend to get stuck on this stage. Oh, okay. Maybe for art. Uh, I mean, I've done videos in Logic Pro where I, where I would just start creating music. Uh, here's a baseline. Here's a percussion section. And then just finish the project. Um, Okay, I'll tell you, guys, I'll, I'll be real. With my music, I don't really plan. 
I'm 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 a I'm more intuitive a composer, meaning I'm I'm building concrete skills, no doubt. But when I when I find a moment, I'm gonna latch onto that moment. I'm gonna try to generate something out of that. And it, it's like a little kernel, and then I'll try to I'll try to compose a piece around that. <laughs> Um, or maybe I'm thinking, uh, I got to build my skill in down tempo. Let me, let me work on a, a percussion section and, 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 and that's it. And then finish that percussion section before I explore instrumentation, uh, it with el other electronic instruments. Uh, I don't really plan. I just do. Now with my writing, I did not plan, uh, the first draft of my first installation, installation of my space opera because before I started writing that work, that first novel of, of the space opera, I had already written a novel before then. Um, so I was used to that kind of work, uh, but I was obsessed with this story for four years. I have hours of recorded thoughts like oh, about these characters, about the scene, um, what people are going through. And of course, a lot of those notes and a lot of those recordings are, are just, um, you know, they're not tossed aside as like, I, I would never revisit them but maybe characters have changed or something like that. But I was obsessed with this story for four years before I even put it down to paper. And it's almost three years since I put it down to paper. So it's time to finish it. <laughs> um, so that said, I will say my next installment and, and, the, and I think it's going to be about a four parter, maybe five parter. I think that might be too long for the story's sake. Um, before I begin my second installment, I will have to plan it out. I will have to because I know the story as in terms of the 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 be beginning, middle, and finish. I know that story, but as far as the details, um, I'm I'm gonna have to plan. So we'll see. Uh, my channel's more music, so I mean, I'm not gonna probably talk about science fiction at length until I start publishing it. <laughs> so it's like, hey, Sound Engraver's channel whoa, includes uh, science fiction, but that's not until my stuff is published. Um, so I can talk about music freely because I do publish music. I do release my music. Um, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a planner when it comes to music. I wish, I wish, but, but that's because I just, I'm just in it and I just do it. Dr. Y says, the song from uh, one of the Disney's first live action cartoon films, So Dear to My Heart, the movie has also stick toivity? Toivity? Stick toivity? I don't know what that is. I'm learning st something new. I know. I, I gotta, I gotta find a way to play music while I excuse myself. <laughs> Logan says, what about how to balance watching the news, learning about the world and being a reasonable citizen when tuning it out and, for, and when tuning it out and focusing on art? I feel like one can't make good art without the former. Um, well, know your world, know your surroundings, because, yeah, that that's, you know, we, we express reality with our art for sure. But. Oh, there's there's a it's not even a fine line. It's like it's like a line about this thick that is just trash that you don't need to learn about. Just 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 pick key events and be objective about those key events and don't listen to what um, don't don't listen to opinion pieces unless that's your thing unless you um, get get kind of like a, a high so to speak uh, listening to people's opinions and and or unless unless commentary or infotainment is your entertainment. Um, so if if infotainment and commentary, on that kind of stuff is your entertainment, then that that's your entertainment and, and you need to have time for your entertainment. Um, but we are bombarded by a lot of stuff that really wants to pull at our attention. And I think it's, I, I think, I, I, I believe the world is an anxious world at that. I believe people st suffer from depression and anxiety. I'm no doctor, I'm no clinician. Um, this isn't, this isn't clinical advice but I I can I can surmise at least that um, depression anxiety do do come from a place where we're not centered and one way I've been centered is being aware about 
what's happening in the world, praying, thinking things through, but then focusing on art. So if, if uh, you know, because like you probably have a relative. I know a relative. Well, do I have a relative? I don't think I have a relative. But I know people who have relatives who will just watch the news 24-7. That's, that's not productive. You're not informed. Because, you know, you take a story for, you know, like, let's say it's breaking news. Well, that, that news, that story is going to change a week from now. So what I like to do is actually, if, if I do get news or if I'm interested in seeing a piece of news, I actually see it until it's been just hashed and rehashed. Now, is the final form true? Is it valid? I don't know. But it is what it is two weeks from the point it, you know, broke the news. So I'm sorry, my chair is just like, I don't know if my chair is objecting to my opinion right now. But um, I, I would say, you know, I, I would look at the news with a, a spectator's eye be objective as much, much as you can, as, as, as much information that you have, know the world around you, know your surroundings, um, think about it, contemplate, but, but I would tune out the opinions that that's what, that, that's just my advice. Cause that, that's what I do. I, I don't want, I don't waste my time on people's opinions unless it's someone's commentary. That's a form of my entertainment. So if you like commentary, if you like commentary as your entertainment, like a podcast or something like that, then that's fine. That's, that's just how you, you know, um, uh, relax, you know, after a, a hard day's work. Uh, yeah, sure. Sure. Mr. Matchstick, I will definitely let you, uh, let people know about your live stream. Very good. Yeah, Mongolian throat singing, ambient intros. Was, wait, was that Wavelength's track? I mean, I don't think, no, that's not Wavelength's track, but that, I, I don't mind throat singing. <laughs> good night, Daniel. Have a good night's sleep. Oh, stick to it, Tivity. Oh, <laughs> well, I pronounced that wrong. And I think we'll wrap up in a, in a few minutes. Uh, the man who never looks into a newspaper is better informed than he who reads them. Inasmuch as he who knows nothing is nearer to truth than he whose mind is filled with falsehoods and errors. I know. I will not disagree with that. I mean, I would say be aware, but don't be distracted. So anyway, uh, I think I caught up a chat. Did I miss anyone? Excuse me. Sorry, a little, a little sleepy today. But um, yeah, I hope you guys like that. Um, just, uh, just to get centered, just to get focused on your art. Um, you know, it's coming on eleven thirty. That's kind of my writing time too. <laughs> so, I think, I think we'll, we'll wrap it up here. Oh, thank you. Boom. There we go. I wonder if he's my favorite founding father. Hmm. I don't know. I don't have a favorite yet. Excuse me, sorry. I have something in my eye. Okay, let's wrap it up. So, um, what do we have on the dock for this week? Well, of course, Monday's live commentary on art, music, or the like. I haven't figured out what I want to do next week, but it's probably going to be something light like this. Uh, I, the last few weeks have been quite chewy, quite heady, take a lot of prep time. So, I kind of just want to relax while I actually do focus more on my art. <laughs> And, um, so we'll, we'll see, we'll see what I have in mind, uh, next week, but something light like this, where, where I'm more involved in the chat. Tomorrow is rewatch time, 10 PM Eastern time, 9 PM central, uh, on the professor geek channel. We are rewatching Laura, another 1940s classic noir. I really enjoyed this one. This was, was, was fun. It was lighthearted. A lot of good dialogue. A lot of good dialogue. Um, some, some witty dialogue. And um, kind, of a, kind of a nice, nice 
ending. I was told that it was happy. It wasn't, I mean, it was, yeah, I could see for it being noir, it was, it was a happy ending. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it's a nice movie. Um, so stay tuned for Professor Geek's rewatch tomorrow night, Tuesday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern. I'll be on the piano, piano for that. I will be on, not piano, because StreamYard can't take piano. Um, the panel for that. Wednesday, I always re recommend David Stewart's channel. I think he does some live streaming, maybe live gaming on, on, on Wednesday nights. He usually fronts the, the game stream with, with some uh, lecture. And then, then I kind of tune out after that. <laughs> um, Thursday is the book study. I have not started my reading this week. Ah, what chapters, Al? Scoundrels, Star Wars scoundrels, 13, 14, 15, 16. I think chapters 13 through up to 17. I don't think, okay, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, I think 13 through 16. I still have to read chapter 12. <laughs> and Friday, probably something on Fan Man tonight, or maybe he's going to do a movie rewatch himself. Uh, but do tune into his Second Cup Cafes Thursdays, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I think 11 a.m. Eastern time. And Troy, if Troy is there. Is Troy here? I haven't seen the Pacellis tonight. Maybe they went to bed early. Um, I think on Troy's channel, I can't remember the movie, guys. <laughs> is it called Happy Accidents? I have, I don't know anything about the movie. Um, and then Troy, I think that'd be 10, 10 p.m. Eastern. So any any update on that for Troy's channel, let me know. Because I think I think Saturday night rewatches on Troy's channel. We had a great time on Forbidden Planet last week. Oh my goodness, that was so fun. Oh, love that movie. Love the art. That's good art. That's some good art and great soundscapes and sound effects. It, it's funny because the um, it doesn't say music score or music scored by um, or soundtrack. It's electronic tonalities and it is it's it's just early electronic music of 1950s it's great stuff highly advanced for that kind of stuff so anyway check out troy's channel uh saturday night and i think uh let's see the 26th so we've got a week before uh the next uh, stream from mr matchstick on mr matchstick's channel um First uh, six episodes of Goblin, Goblin Slayer. I can't talk, guys, tonight. I'm sorry. And that will be the 26th, Sunday. So his his weed watches are Sunday. I don't even know what weed means. I hope I'm being... Uh, I, I, I'm presenting myself with, with grace and decorum and having tact with my speech. All right. So I think if uh, no one else has anything else to say i th i think we'll, we'll close happy accidents thank you troy and yes yes let's do all that fan, fan man second cup cafe scoundrels chapters 3 13 through 16 thank you big al and happy accidents on troy's channel and i i think i mentioned the professor's channel i think i mentioned it <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. Thanks always for watching and listening. Always be on the lookout for some more sound experimentation every Thursday. Keep producing the art you love until I see you next, and I will catch you later. Thanks again.